Hello everybody and welcome to my channel once again. In today's video we will be talking about a tool that not many people know but that will take your queries to the next level in terms of performance. Today we are talking about Active Record Explain. When you have an Active Record query and you run Explain on it, Rails will just uh, execute the Explain database management system command and pretty print it. Now the output will differ whether you use Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, or SQLite, uh, which you can see. I mean, this, you can see these differences in the Rails documentation, and I will also leave you the link in the in the in description down below. But basically, what all these outputs have in common is that all of them have first the SQL query as it will be run in the database and also have the query plan that the database management system is going to execute. Understanding this plan is crucial as we will see in the next example. So let's see the application I have prepared here for the example really quick. As you can see, this application will be using Postgres, which is important then in order to understand the output that the explain command is going to have because as I mentioned earlier it will differ depending on the database management system that you use and besides that the application has a very simple user model that I have created with this migration here which has a name email and some timestamps as you can see in the result of the schema.rb file that has been generated after I have executed this migration. So, and also I think it's worth mentioning that I have preloaded this database with uh, 100,000 records. So I have done that by using uh, the gems, um, a faker and also factory bot rails, but of course you can use your other methods in order to see the database. But okay, that's not important for, not, not relevant for this example, I mean the way you uh, see the database, but just that you know that I have seeded the database with a few records. And so if we um, open here the console, What will happen if we, for example, um, want to, let's say, run a pretty common use case in a web application, which will be, for example, fetch a user by email. Very typical, for example, when you are doing some kind of authentication or you're trying to find a user. So in this case, for example, you will say user find by email, and the email, let's say, could be Alberto at example.com, not my email address, just something I have invented. So if you run that, you see that it's fetching all users here from the users table where the user email is. The, the, the argument that we have provided here. And then it's also limited to just one record, one row here. So what will happen if we try to run explain on the find by uh, query? So the problem with the find by query is that it doesn't return a, a query. It just returns either the record or nil if it hasn't found that. So if we run explain here, we have, we get that this is not defined for the nil class because there is no user in our database which uh, has the email alberto at example.com but if we see this query here we can um, build that in this way here we can if we do user where email alberto at example.com and we limit that to one we are basically 
getting the same query here as we had with the find by. So if we run exam explain, sorry, on that, first of all, as we mentioned before, you usually get the query that is going to be executed, which is this here, which as we can see, it's the same query that it's generated um, when using find by. So we have replicated the, the same query, which is important for our sample. And then after that, we get the most valuable part of explain, at least for this example, which is the query plan. And the query plan is what the database management system is going to execute in the end in order to get the data. So it basically describes how the database management system is going to get the information we want plus more information as we will explain here. So as you can see, it's telling us that it's going to perform a sequential scan on the user's table, which means that it's going to go through all the rows of this user table one by one. And while it's going through all these rows, it's going to execute this filter. So it's going to check row by row if the email matches the value we have provided here. So alberto at example.com, which doesn't seem pretty efficient because if you had instead of 100,000, you have millions of rows, you see what's going on here, right? It's not going to scale. So how else we can realize that it's, it's not going to scale? So if you take a look at the cost here, which is the, the other information that the explain gives to you, it gives you information about the cost here. First, this first value here is the startup cost. And this value here is the total cost of executing the query. So to understand cost, the cost is not given in any fixed unit like milliseconds or something like that. It's a based on arbitrary units that can be defined in the query planner parameters and that can be adjusted. So if you adjust these parameters, these arbitrary units will vary in, in a proportional way as the, as the change you have made in these parameters. Um, but it's not that they are uh, any fixed unit, but at least we get an idea of what is more or less performant by comparing those because they are basically using the the same setup. So as you can see here, the startup cost, so the initialization cost, costs, um, the cost of getting the query in the output phase is in this case zero. And then the total cost is 2,500, I mean, more than 2,500, which is pretty high, as we, you will see in comparison. And this here, rows, is telling us that the query will most likely return one row, which we know because we have limited it in, in our query here to just one, so it's, it's correct. And the width result here, this is the width is telling us that in average, these rows will have 62 bytes. So by seeing that, if you have the sequential scan, how could you improve this? So a pretty common uh, way to optimize these queries is um, adding an index, right? So I have prepared here a migration with a very simple index. As you can see, we are just adding an index on email for the users table. So if we run this migration with bundle exit rails db migrate that we have here, 
we see that it will add an index on email on that users table it's finished so we go again into the console and let's see how the performance how the plan the query plan for our same query has has varied so if we execute the explain on the de on the same query we now see that that things have changed pretty much so as you can see right now it's not doing a sequential scan anymore right it's going through an index it's doing going through an index and also we see that it's using the index that we have just created so that means that the migration we have just created help it's helping the results we are getting right and as you can see in this index scan is checking the index condition if it's i mean if it's the the email matches the value alberto at example.com that we have provided so and then the other big change the major change you can see here is the cost the cost okay it's slightly higher for the for the startup cost but is i mean i wouldn't take that in in mind if you compare this with the total cost so as you can see here we have 8.44 in costs compared with 2000 517 in costs that's around 289 times 290 times faster less cost than the previous version we had so as you can see that's a huge improvement so imagine you applying that to all your queries checking the different ways in which you can um, improve them and to do that what i will recommend you is to check the um, documentation for each database you are using in this case i'm using um, postgres but here in the active record um, documentation you can see you have you can see here the um, documentation for every database management systems here for example for sql light mysql mariadb or postgres sql which is the one I'm, that i'm checking here um, so as you can see you have you can you will understand about sequential scans as we were um, seeing before you then have here bitmap heap scan and also uh, if you can see if you can check yourself what the values that i have showed you before mean so you can check here all the information about them so with that i hope i you have discovered a great tool and i look i'm looking forward for you using this and that's it for today i hope you have discovered a new tool that will be very 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 useful for you in your daily job if you have enjoyed my content please please subscribe to my channel and also don't forget to smash that like button if you want to give me any feedback or you want me to talk about any topic please leave me a comment down below and i will do my best to bring it to this channel so without further ado i hope to see you in my next video adios